I just had a funny thought. Yeah? That pregame oh, interview, what did Raven say that they could approve upon? Their strategy. Mm-hmm. Said we could have better strategy. What has been their strategy this game and last game? Literally just, one? It, ju- <laughs> just 1v5. Yeah. It's literally the entire <laughs> draft is built around this Radiant this PA. Like back. the mag PA, tree and protector. Like yeah. same thing with the Dusa. <laughs> They're literally just trying to go with this 1v5. Uh, like... <laughs> Is that the idea? Is that a better strategy? Well, for Raven, I don't know if it is. For Raven, it is. Like, yeah, Raven, you guys are not buffing me enough. <laughs> That's the problem. I mean, Boom understand. They said in their interview, we have to shut Raven down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Last game, they were like, FBZ, you are the chosen one. Take your Mars and go and shut him down. And he did. He killed him. He ran at him. He took his his I'm farm. Yeah, and he's got a good chance to do so again here. I don't think Brew is um, unhappy with the PA matchup whatsoever. Lane um, is pretty great. At yeah, it. like you, you do well in lane. You've got uh, innate uh, evasion. You are an excellent hero. Like they, they, it is scary the burst damage that this hero can provide. But um, oh, you're right. otherwise, I think it's good. Boom. Meanwhile, we see the flexibility. Right, safe lane TA four position Luna or carry Luna mid TA. Options are open. So many options. I and they have lost Luna pick. Though. Uh, for Luna with Brew? Yes. Cinder yeah. Brew's triggered every time. I think it's like yes. 95% that this is a safe lane TA uh, and for Luna, three Brew. But Five Yeah, I like it. Uh, boom with TA uh, and Enchantress. I think like last game we saw what they did with Enchantress. They were able to take Roshan with her reasonably w uh, early. I think Fnatic oh, like contested it too late and like pick. died a lot. So which was rough for them. So boom, this game they can kind of execute the same strategy. Roche with TA and Luna. Uh, Brew can't, like doesn't need a blink dagger to enable like his str his strength and power spikes. He's just gonna get his all off and be able to fight with this team. Uh, they have like a very like fast death bullish approach right now. Whereas Fnatic are more like we're gonna play really conservatively. We're gonna stack our camps, Five stack our triangle. Remaining. Magnus is gonna empower PA. She's gonna farm it up, and then we're gonna try and take this game to to late. What's left? Void spirits. <laughs> Because, like, all, all the, the final spirits. bands are mids, right? So, <laughs> and we already had some mids banned away before. They need something that can kind of protect the triangle right now. Just be a... Storm. Is it going to yeah. be Storm versus Void? Sure. <laughs> What's left, guys? Uh, what are the only two spirit heroes left? <laughs> Lena's still in the pool, no? No, Lena got banned. Oh, the gosh, she did early. early. Yep. Dang, okay. Oh, I don't mind Storm. I mean, he, it's a little on the greedy side, but it's okay. I mean, I was worried, like, if Boom picks something, like, hyper-aggressive here, like... What is I mean, Fnatic just remaining. are on the back foot. Yes, yes, yes. But I <laughs> look, I'm trying to <laughs> look at the bright side. Like Storm has a small power spike. You know, he can go for the Kaja and Sanji build that people are building these days, sure. which is not as greedy and can play a bit sooner. You have you have trained to protect your towers. Snap can cut lanes. You can always go for the PA Ags build and then cut lanes endlessly and. You're thinking a lot of this like 20 to 30 minute like cut lane build idea instead of like how they're going to stop Boom from just taking Roshan and uh, well, yeah, it's the, I'm, <laughs> walking I'm, it down. Well, yeah, because I'm already in desperate mode of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how do you delay this game? If you're Boom, you just pick a fast mid and then you just snowball, yeah. right? Fnatic's issue that I see is just that who is helping Storm Spirit like set up kills to to get pickoffs with? You Magnus is... uh. Yeah. It's got RP, but he needs a blink, tree, overgrowth, like you're relying on your support six. It's going to be a really slow start for Fnatic at least. Oh. Mid Doom would be cool. Void Spirit's fine. Mm. Yo, go Huskar. <laughs> go Huskar. Uh, <laughs> DK is a dead hero. Oh, oh, Puck's still in there. Yo, oh, Puck, that really Puck. Obvious. that's hype, that's hype. Yeah, that's, uh, that's. I mean, that's a, such a sick hero. You picked it up against Storm Spirit PA. Man, what I can't believe Puck was still in there. Wouldn't Puck be a better, was, wasn't that a nice option for Fnatic as well? Or to, like, up their tempo a bit? No, I don't think he likes to play into TA. Oh, right, because the option is yeah. Yeah. you put TA mid and then they destroy your lane. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, they were kind of uh, stuck. They, their options were a lot harder because they didn't get overall last pick and TA counters certain set of heroes. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely leaning towards Boom here. Boom. Uh, Puck Woo. feels really good. I think the biggest thing is that Jabs is going to have to do a lot this game. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to do a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. They just need to play conservatively, try not to scrap too much early, and then... When they hit their timings of like Raven's items, jabs blink, they're good. Yeah. 
Uh, well, we've seen we've seen Raven one v five before. He has done it. This is expertise. Will he be able to do it against Boom though? That's the real question here. Or will Boom uh, run them over? We're gonna have to see. As game number two gets started, we're gonna send it over to our wonderful casting pair of Gods and Lizard. Alrighty, Lizard, it's time now for game number two. It seems to be all in on Raven once again. Gone from Medusa to PA, one hard carry to the next. Fnatic really sticking to their four protect one play style in many ways. Yeah, they're not moving away from it at all. The Medusa in the last game, now the PA. I like the fact that they have a more active mid laner this time around, somewhat. I, I really liked when they picked Storm Spirit up. Uh, Void Spirit was still in the pool, so either yep. one of these two would work. But then they got hit with a puck, Yopash, <laughs> and I just liked Boom's draft even more. After that pick, it's just so well-rounded. They have everything they need. They had no ways of catching Storm before that, and that's what Puck brought to the table. All right, well, we'll be hopping in the game in just a sec. We get to see FBZ go back to Brewmaster once again. And yes, this has been a bit of a Boom special, the support Luna played by Tim's. Panel, we're talking about it, and we'll see how he fares here. Uh, are you a believer in the support, Luna? Uh, I was uh, for a patch or two, but uh, I haven't really been watching a lot of Luna 4s recently. I, I think it can work, sure. You have way of uh, making Cinderbrew work as well, right, FBZ? FBZ, he gets out of the nature's grasp, and he's pretty speedy. He goes for the level 1 Drunken Brawler just to get away. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's worth it. You you prevent them from having that first blood. You don't really mind that much that you have Drunken Brawler, right? So you're, you're okay. Really well played by him to get away. Plus they planted that ward on the uh, on the lane, possibly just to get the kill. It's a yeah. decent ward, but it's not necessarily the best ward that you want to place as Dire. I feel like I've never seen... That's such an unconventional five-man smoke from Fnatic. Usually you're not going to a lane like that, but... Perhaps they had a read that they knew FBZ would be there, but unable to get the kill. We'll see them fight over some of these runes now, and boom, we'll get three of them with Skem winning the right-click battle over Jabs. By the way, it's 100% something that they noticed uh, FBZ do, and they just try to adapt to it. Try okay. to get that first skill on him. Because like when you're playing versus teams, especially when you're playing leagues, you, you watch the replays, you, you see how they move early on, and most of the times players repeat themselves for the first 30 seconds, like what they do, where they plan the ward, how they run to the lane. So you can abuse that. Well, they thought they had a first blood, but unfortunately not the case. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Scam forced to pop the level 1 nature's attendance just to fight with DJ. And unable to go for any aggressive plays early with Impetus or Enchant. We'll see if DJ can block some of these camps from spawning. I imagine that's going to be the plan here for the Snapfire. I, I feel like when you're playing Enchantress, um, getting that level 1 Impetus sometimes is fine. It's something that I do all of the time because I just mm -hmm. want to hit people, right? <laughs> but, and I have these carry aspirations. But the real thing, the thing that you really want to do is take Nature's Attendance. Level 1 enchant is not that great. Level 2 is amazing. Level 1 is, yeah, I get to creep, maybe I get to the lane and he sticks around there for a couple of seconds. Level 2 enchant is really where... So you need that level 3 to actually make enchant really worth it. Yep. In, in my opinion, at least. I'm gonna keep trading harass down bottom. Up top, Raven's done a good job on his PA, dragging the creep wave behind his tower, getting a lot of denies out of this. Well, not actual denies, but denying the XP in the sense that the uh, FBZ offlane brew isn't in the neighborhood for it. But it's yeah, down bottom where Fnatic are getting harassed a lot. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Januel, uh, Januel actually did the same thing again. Now they pulled the creep wave around. So, but they're just fighting it out here, very close to the tower. I think if you're Raven, you're fine with it, I guess. There is a creep wave under the tower, though, so he kind of needs to juggle around. How do you, how do you like PA this game as far as carry matchups or just in this game as a whole? Do you think it's like the right kind of carry to be putting Raven on this here? I feel that they have enough to make it work. Uh, I don't like it way too much with the TA carry, right, versus the TA carry, because TA just comes online way too faster, starts pressuring you, starts taking the towers, you're playing versus Panda as well. But uh, the fact that you have Magnus, you have Living Armor, you have a little Shredder, and pro possibly a Medallion Solar Crest on uh, Snapfire, 
I think it can work. Okay. We'll see how Raven's game goes. Looking at some of these other lanes down bottom, constant harass. BJ keeps on blocking these camps from Skem, who's yet to be able to have his big camp spawn. BJ trying to do it once more. And uh, he'll block the, both the stack as <laughs> well as the spawn. Very pesky play from DJ. Yeah, really well played. Um, Skem is level 2, and he did get the ghost. It's a really good creep to get on... on uh... On that small camp, yeah. so he will take that away. He's trying to take the bounty here to contest Armel, but he's a bit too late. They're gonna actually try and kill Scam. They come in DJ with the cookie, followed up by the little shredder. Have they got the damage for this one? One more overload, he not enough. Himself. And Armel yep. now needs to run. Actually, this this ghost hits hard. It's gonna expire, luckily for Armel. Yeah. He's going to be forced back to base, it looks like. They may still be hunting for Scam. DJ is very close by, and once he has both his spells back up, they're not, probably not enough damage with the Tangos and the Ring of Protection. All, all things considered, on the safe lane, Tino and uh, Jabs, they're kind of trading the last hits, so nothing really great happened over there because of Scam. But Scam did prevent Storm from doing anything with the bounty rune, taking the hard camp. So he forced Armel to go back to base. So it's a huge win, actually, for Boom. Do you know? Okay. You know, let's be a little bit careful with how low he's letting himself get here. Fraction gonna be up soon, but he hasn't quite got enough mana for it. But yeah, he's got the heals from the Nature's Attendant. Skem making sure he stays healthy and can keep his presence in this lane. Yeah, they, they messed up the Attendants a little bit by being around creeps, right? So the heals didn't go necessarily only to Tino, but it's not really a significant portion as it's only level one heal anyway. Yeah. I like One's what DJ is doing. He's he's preventing him from getting any creeps really here. <laughs> yeah. Definitely you can see the experienced four player. He knows what to do to make a, a support's life miserable or an enchantress's life miserable in this specific case. But uh, Skem's still finding a good way to impact this game regardless. Speaking of impacting the game from the support role, Tim's just continuing to stack up camps in the Radiant Triangle. There's like a triple stack on the Ancients, triple stack on the other camp as well. So he's got stacks mm -hmm. galore from his support Luna, which seems to be a big part of making this support Luna work. And also keep in mind that this is a part of making Panda work. Like FBZ, uh, they can't kill him. Uh, Treant and, and PA, they're trying to, but there's no way. They might kill Tim's here though. He's not careful. They drop down the Leech Seed in Nature's Grasp. Body block on a Tim's and Armel gonna go jumping in. No level 6 on the Storm. That's why they were trying to rotate and gank Armel before he hit 6 with Yopash having the Dream Coil. But instead with the Observer on the high ground, Fnatic punished the rotation of Tim's. Yeah, and when you're thinking about it, it's, it's a Luna rotating in on the mid lane. Can they necessarily kill a Storm Spirit? Yeah, but it would have been really hard considering there's a tree that can rotate. Oh. oh, he bowled into the Dream Coil. I don't think they've got the damage to kill Armel. Leash gonna end in a second. Cookie to the high ground. He actually breaks the coil. Bit of a misplay there. And now he's in trouble. He dies to the Lucha Beam. They do lose the Storm in the end. DJ just a second, a split second too early with the Cookie. Finds a Curry on his way out as Tim's gets himself a double kill. Great play from Boom. And unfortunately, yeah, the room, I think Storm thought he could zip and get the room, but DJ had other ideas and accidentally took it for himself. I'm not sure uh, if that was a huge mistake with the cookie or if he knew that Yopaj will be there with Waning Rift. But I, I get, yeah, I, I, I still guess, yeah, you needed to wait a bit longer. FBZ top lane. Yep, getting low. Doesn't have level 6 yet, but they haven't got the damage in with him showing up. He's going to force him back. Now Park Yopaj, he's here as well. He's looking to clean up Yanuel's tree and protector once more. Raven trying to blur himself away, but... Can't really get out of there, and yeah, once these spells come back up, Raven could be in some trouble. Yopaj is diving for it. He's just under the tower. He just needs another orb in a couple of seconds. Raven forced to TP himself home, and Yopaj will realize that he's out of there once he throws out another orb and doesn't find him. Good TP out from Raven, but man, Yopaj getting active early. Yeah, he's just bullying him, right? He probably knew that there's no kill there because PA had like 13, 14 stick charges, magic one charges, mid lane. Fall yeah. in. Cookie, a bit off the mark there. Dream Coil now going to be immediately broken by Armel, waiting Rift to follow it up, but 
Don't think they kill Armel. He goes bull lightning away. Still has some <laughs> mana. I, I gave it 50 50 that Yopash is going to uh, go on the orb, jump on the orb on the high ground and try to go for the kill. I thought it was high. I was surprised he didn't. <laughs> but uh, Armel now finding bottom skim lane. in the jungle here. And yeah, bottom Jabs. lane. Okay, Jabs gets away for now. We'll have a shockwave to help bring down Skem, perhaps, and this time around they'll get the cookie combo. I, I love how Tino actually tried to kill Magnus there by hitting the creeps. He was hoping for those side blades. They were they weren't truly really on point, so uh, Jabs actually survives. What's interesting is that Jabs went for a Helm of Dominator. This isn't something that's like uh, too out of ordinary for a Magnus player, but uh, you are playing into Enchantress, so. Yes. It can be a little problematic with your creeps. Look, Scam is right there. He takes it, goes away. <laughs> like, <Just thanks>. bye bye. <laughs> Don't have to find a neutral camp when the, the Magnus brings it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, thank you for buying that helm, bro. <laughs> and now the creep is actually like pretty yeah. damn strong. He's blocking the, the camps. It's. Uh... That's the one thing I feel like Boom have done so well in both Game 1 and Game 2, is just prevent the farming game from Fnatic, because they're playing this greedy, raven, carry us kind of style. Both Game 1 and Game 2, they're blocking the Ancients, not letting them get stacked, whether it's with wards or in this game, just some Enchantress creeps. Yeah, and I have to say that Scam, he's extremely disciplined. Like, he's disciplined and hardworking. The way he plays, th these small little things, like sending the creep to block, uh, 99% of Enchantress players know this, but they're yeah. just way too either lazy or undisciplined, they want to do something else. They don't really pay attention to these small little details that he always does. Green call on mid. They go in looking for the kill. Have they got the damage to bring down the PA? It doesn't look like them. With Storm turning this one around, Skims could be in some trouble with the tree and protector rotation, but Yopaj has an arcane rune. I don't think you want to fight into that one if you're fanatic. Yopaj still chasing, Yopash. still wants more. Unafraid, he's hoping for a rune and he'll get it. He gets a DD rune now as well. And while all this is going on, TA is farming up like a quadruple ancient stack. So, uh, this game is looking really good for Boom right now. Yeah, and they're tipping bottom. They actually want to defend. And going with FBZ's Brumas. He's got the primal split. Gets stunned to start things off. Cookie follow up. And then DJ just can go for the TP out. But Lucid Feeble, cancel it. Actually, Japs has no mana. mana yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> they don't know they, that. Oh, but his courier is going to give him up. Oh, if they saw his no. courier, they might know he's here now. But they're, they're soul ring though, so now he'll be able to okay. TP. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Raven dies to a TA. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh boy. All right. You know, is massive. Six thousand net worth, fifteen hundred ahead of his puck, and then a good two thousand ahead of the highest fanatic hero, which is Magnus. So, he, looking like a really good game for him. He needs a thousand gold and he has a full desolator. Like he ha actually has a mitral hammer and a blightstone on the way. Oh, well, this is one very fat TA. Yeah. So much I mean, credit goes to Kim's and all his stacking that he did. I mean, there's so much focus around the dire ancients and stopping Fnatic from farming. Fnatic never considered what's going on with this TA, what's happening with the radiant ancients. Well, They're going to invade now. Well, damage is being done, kind of. They're trying to kill a Tino. Tino's going to look to turn and fight and go in Armel. Has he got the damage to get this kill? One more right click and he might end up a melt strike against oh. dodge Armel, but he still gets the kill. Great melt strike dodge, but the storm still end up going down. Now with the eclipse from Kim, <laughs> DJ in some trouble here. Living armor, not going to keep him alive. A two for one as Tino even got the kill. The trap got the kill. Jabs. He's actually dying in the enemy oh, triangle, in the other triangle, that is. And he gets the double kill, like you said. Which brings him even closer to the Desolator. And he gets the solo experience for the Storm Spirit. And these things from Fnatic, the way they're playing... They're just not respecting the amount of farm that the TA has got. Like he was way too big. The Dragonlance, the Power Threads on Strength, level 12. And just not re respecting the fact that he that there was they had no idea that ancient sack even existed they never had any vision they never like even thought to like check what was going on with those radiant ancients until it was way too late yeah, that's something that uh, you're definitely on point the supports never bothered uh, never bothered to go never bothered to investigate and uh, tino 
He's, yeah, hundred gold away from Dezo now. Roshan should be the next uh, objective for them. Maybe a tier one on the top lane. Yeah, they've not been prioritizing these towers as much on the boom side, but with good reason with how well they are out farming Fnatic and now starting to rack up some kills. Push down bottom will push the storm away. Armel has not been having the greatest game on his storm spirit. It, it completely changes the way you play the game, for Fnatic that is, once you fail that kill on TA. If you get the kill on TA on the Storm Spirit, he's suddenly way closer to the Orchid, you get that Orchid closer, you can pl make plays on the map. Puck is in danger, You can. there's no saving you from the Orchid, right? He went for a Witchblade. Yeah. But uh, be because of that gank failing, ah, you were just on a back foot. We'll see if the PA can turn this game around. Doesn't have to go for the Battle Fury with the Empower. Instead, getting an early Echo Saber with a Deso queued up next. Raven, though, a bit underfarmed and a bit under level. That's a smoke from Fnatic. They're invading. They see FBZ's Brewmaster, but can they kill him? No Orkin. I think, yeah, they're just going to ignore the Brew. Instead, they find Tino here. They drop the Kisses and Overgrowth to follow it up. Tino should be going down here unless he's got another Refraction, but. Looks like the damage has been done, and Fnatic had a nice kill. Can they get anything more? With Yopaz showing up, they want to get Armel Storm, and they'll drop the Dream Call to lock him down in place. Armel gets a Boulder Toss, and the waning rip follow-up. Yopaz times his spells perfectly to Yopash, bring, bring down him. the Storm. <laughs> He's not done. He wants more. DJ under his power. There's plenty of team, uh, Boom Heroes collapsing here as Tim's rotates on up as well, and they get three Fnatic kills. Huge plays from Boom. Yeah, huge plays. Uh, they did kill TA though, on the side of Fnatic, so not everything is that grim. Managing to slow down the TA at least for a little while, while your PA is farming with Empower on the other side of the map. It, it could be worse, that's all I'm saying. I, I think they're kinda alright with the kill they got. The... if... Boom, decide they want to maybe go for Roshan. They do have a DD rune. Unfortunately, it's on the Puck, not the TA. Yeah, they're going for sure, right? There is a ward on them, so... Uh, Fnatic does know this is happening, but can they do anything about it? That's the question. Storm's about to have an Orchid. He just needs 20 gold. They're going to scan it. So, yeah, they know well and truly what is going on here, but it doesn't seem like the plan is to contest it. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Now you have that uh, Aegis. The question is, do you, do you use it to really pressure high ground, or do you wait, take a tier 2 and wait for two Aghanim Scepters that you're buying? And they, they will be huge. It's the one on TA and the other on Brewmaster, right? It, it just activates you in a different way once you get those. Now Fnatic is playing a bit of a split push game, sending creeps down bottom with the Magnus to try and push out some of these waves. They don't seem interested at all in trying to fight Boom right now. Janwell, Janwell, he's fine. Gets away TPs. Yep. Someone in the mid lane, he's being pinged out by Fnatic. They want to go in with a jump. And they burst him down. He got up for Nature's Attendance, but the heal not enough to keep him alive. So nice little pick off for Fnatic. Not anything to write home about, but it's something. Yeah. Enchantress is extremely tanky because of Untouchable, but uh, once you blink on her with the PA, you get that bonus attack speed. You, you have Echo Saber as well, so if one of those crits, and she's just dead, yep. she's gone. We'll see Fnatic try and reclaim their jungle and try and get a bit more farm on Raven or Mel Storm as well, now with an Orchid, so they can keep trying to make some of these plays, but I would imagine Boom's going to look to fight back at this point with an Aegis in hand and Do you know? not really waiting on any big items anymore. As soon yeah, as Gino comes top, Storm's out. <laughs> yeah, DJ, he's not that lucky. He, uh, he was actually the one in the front lines just breaking the smoke if it happens towards Storm Spirit. So, it sometimes you just feed like that as a support. You, you have to for your core. I, yeah. I really like the fact as well, like, if you think about it, this Aghanim's on TA, it might not be the perfect item because you you need some saves versus the three and plus uh mortimer's kisses right like they can kill you alone even but because of the fact that you have ages you can be a little bit greedier and go for axe first and then afterwards go for a bkb manta whatever you want to versus overgrowth and uh, the disables 
Yep. Yeah, for now, was, I mean, he died twice, but the first death was totally fine when you got the counter kill in the stall, and the second one, perhaps a bit more Fnatic favored, but... With Aegis in hand, he'll take a tier 2 tower top, which means they can now claim enemy outpost. so this really sets up Boom to get a lot of map control if they want it. And they are collapsing around this mid lane. Jab shows himself with a shockwave, and the hunt is on. He's forced to screw away. They are being chased, hunted by Boom. Boom want these kills, and with the nighttime vision from the Luna, they may just get vision of some of these heroes soon. Yo, he's pinging out Raven, at least Raven's position, and there's a ward. Goes for the blur here, but they're still pinging, they still have an idea of where he is. Elsewhere, it's going to be the Brewmaster, FBZ, finds jabs, and it looks like they found a new target. The PA eludes them, but they'll get the Magnus instead. Doesn't look like they'll get anything more. Fnatic doing a pretty good job of getting out and cutting their losses there, even though they do still lose one core hero. Yep. Fnatic is uh, defensively playing this game really well, considering you know what what mess they created for themselves when they died to the TA in the triangle. I I think they're doing quite all right at the moment. Yeah. Armel on the top lane. Oh, yeah. Yopaz. Yules. In our came room. They start with the Yules. They get him with the waning rift to follow it up. Yopaz does not have a dream coil, and they use oh, the, the orchid, orchid to stop Lucy's yeah. team. <laughs> Ooh, nice from Armel. Damn, that was really well played. Yeah, nice Orchid just in time to prevent Luna from Lucen beaming. Very well yeah. played. Yeah, this it's old not. boomer still got moves, kids. Step away. <laughs> and as much as like we can praise Fnatic for how they're playing from behind defensively, as Jad's going to look to initiate in, gets a nice RP off, sets up a more Miss Kisses here. They want to break the Tino Ages, but he's still got 40 seconds on it, so they're going to have to fight a second life on this TA. They get the first. Storm Yule's up here. Are they going to look to go for a Dream Coil? Armel gets himself out of there. FBZ. No dream call being committed. There was another Orchid again. Using the Orchid to stop the Puck from using these spells. Fnatic, like you said, defensive plays by them have been on point so far. Like, they're doing everything that's necessary to stay in this game. Yeah. The, the big but is still, like, we're praising Fnatic, but Boom are still solidly ahead. And playing. they're yep. playing the map well, even if they're not, you know... These ganks in these plays aren't 16 the way they'd hope. They're still in control. And they're in control. If you consider that they, that was RP used and pretty much every ulti they had to kill off Aegis, right? It's not even a, a full kill on a TA. It's just an Aegis reclaim. So uh, if you're boom, you're fine. You're okay with that because yep. you know that you need BKB before you pressure high ground anyway. Dino needs that BKB to make moves. They saw Armel on a ward and they are hunting him. Yopaz leading the way, smoked up. Can Armel get out of this one? They know where he is. Yopaz pops the smoke and he balls away. Armel should be fine. Again, eluding this puck. He is just unkillable. There's like three times in a row I feel like he should have died, but he gets away with some nice plays. And also keep in mind that that was a smoke for him, right? They smoked up, they anticipated where he will be farming, and they went for it, and he still reacts on time, so... Some spider senses from Armel here in this game. Once he gets that BKB, he can always rely on that to get out of the silences or the dream calls. A little bit of ways to go. And some of these other heroes, Raven has managed to quietly farm his way up to a Desolator, almost level 15. His BKB queued up as well. Does this game start to swing back Fnatic's way with this BKB on PA, or is it going to still be tricky for them? It's still tricky, but they definitely, like, have a shot. Once that Aegis was claimed by TA, I felt that this game might just roll out of control and uh, Boom will take it. But I really think... I was praising the Aghanims, but the Aghanims build on Tino is also what's delaying this game for them so hard. If he has a BKB, I believe they could be making plays already. But he's afraid. He knows that it doesn't even matter what PA has. Like, yeah, BKB is important and then she's a hero. But uh, it's literally just DJ on the Snapfire plus any sort of control, and the TA is dead. So, well, just gotta play very carefully. And we're gonna see if Fnatic have more success than Boom have had with their own smoke move. We're gonna reclaim some of their own jungle here, avoiding these traps with the smoke. Yopaz down bottom, who's invis up. Will he show himself here? 
Fnatic just trying to play around this high ground. Scam in the front lines. That's just an Enchantress, not the ideal target to go on. And it doesn't look like DJ wants to initiate out of smoke just for the Ench. Both teams will avoid a confrontation, yeah, but yep, three for bottom. This time around, he's going to make sure he's got the lockdown for the Storm. Oh, uses the Orc in the pull. Will he get away? Armel, he stopped the waning rift. Use the Vortex, the pull at the end of the Dream Call to stop any follow up from Yopash. It's still a hard kill, right? It's just still an extremely hard kill for Yopash to make as he had no follow up. The, his teammates were too far away. But nice Orchid once again by Armel, just saving his life, getting out. Dab's being chased down. He was scouted in. <laughs> they seem to know where he is. Smoked up Puck. In hot pursuit, we'll catch him with the Yule Scepter. Not sure Jabs can do quite what we saw the Storm doing. This is uh, a bit of a different hero, and they're gonna they're gonna make sure they get this kill. Throughout the primal split, it is an Ag Scepter, so they have got a second one if needed. Yeah. As Jabs says, this stat doesn't truly really matter. He's waiting for Raven's BKB before they fight anyway. He's trying to delay as much as possible, or maybe he's just making himself feel a little bit better there. Yeah, that's a great voice line. <laughs> Every time you feed, ah, it doesn't Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't truly. Really. I, I, I did it on purpose. I, it's it's the next level, death. Yeah, you, I actually outplayed you guys when you killed me. On bottom lane. Yeah, they get the Orca down under the puck, but he has a defensive Yules here. Tim's running him with the Eclipse. Level 2 doing some good damage here. Armel gets him with the Vortex here. Can they bring him down? Armel gonna die. The TA damage is too much and pucking off the phase shift here. He gets out of there and the Sapphire Mortimus is just completely off the mark. DJ Glimmer keeps himself to safety for a split second, but you've got to imagine they're gonna find a way to bring him down regardless. As and Puck FBC, didn't die. Yeah. Yeah, Puck, Puck actually went away. He, he survived through that. They, they tried to go on the Puck with very low mana even on Storm. He was on like 15. 20% perhaps, and then there's a follow-up. They're saving all this time. They're playing the game so pa patiently, so disciplined, and then they go without the BKB on PA and just throw it all away. Yeah, they, they must have seen something that they felt like it was an opening for them to get a kill uncontested, but yeah. They're waiting for this double BKB timing on PA and Storm, and they get a little bit impatient, a little bit angsty, and get punished heavily for it. Suddenly it's a 15k gold lead. It'd been kind of stable on that 8 to 10k mark, but now boom, pull even further ahead. And you've got to imagine they're just waiting for that Roche number two, which is going to respawn now. So free Aghanim Shard as well as Aegis awaits for boom esports. And they, they scouted out the puck and they thought, okay, if we jump him with your kid, follow up by Fire Snap Cookie, maybe we can take him down. But the follow up from boom is just way too quick you have ages on that ta you never know how fast she can uh join the fights and that's exactly what happened now ages like you called is going their way it seems yep see who gets the the ag shard as well there's no contest from fanatic on this one Looks like they're going to be playing the turtle game. They have got, you know, the high ground defense of a Magnus, although that's a Magnus who is getting gone on mid lane by the Dream Crawl. No follow-up once again, though. Yopaz, a few times he's tried to make these kills happen and just not quite had the backup he's needed, but still a great game from him. 8-0-5 on the path. Yopaz just going unpunished despite playing against this Orchid Storm. Yeah, I feel like uh, he can get away with flaming his teammates there. Come on, guys, just be a bit faster. And then he's a puck with travels, Yule's blink dagger. You know, like there's no way yeah. you can you can follow him up if he doesn't wait for you. Um, you talked about the shard, and it's obvious they give it to TA because he he actually Tino had it queued up before too. With that silence yeah. now, you get an extra way of dealing with Storm, who actually did complete the BKB. So that's nice for Fnatic. They do have everything they need for the next fight. Fnatic thinking about poking at this tier 2 tower, but they don't want to get punished for going for any kind of too aggressive a play down bottom. Instead, they're going to be forced back top to defend. And it looks like Boom are ready to go high ground. With the TA having an Aegis, four minutes left on that one, and most of their items coming out, they feel like it is their time to strike. Maybe just missing one item, which could be the Aghanims on Luna. Luna just 500 gold away from an Aghanim Scepter. Be a pretty big pickup and also TA's MK. Okay, so they're close to a couple big items. Puck A on this, 
TAMKB. Three couriers just chilling by that radiant secret shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just waiting for the items to come out of stock, you know? Like, this is some. Uh, what? Like. Like they, Black they set Friday up, in America. Yeah, you know, exactly. They they everybody's the waiting tents. for the stores to open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As soon as the stores open, everyone's charging in, trying to, you know, grab the latest Elbowing deal. each other, you know, getting in, trampling one another. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, it, it looks like two of the items are shipped out, and Courier is waiting for the Aghanims to, for, for the point booster to complete the Ags, I believe, on uh, Luna. Of course. In terms of the Storm PA have the BKB, they'll be fine against this Aghanim's Eclipse, but as far as the backline goes, that can get a bit tricky. Um, that backline, Tram Protect again, caught in a dream call here. Yopaj, we're gonna bring him down, but he just blinks away into the Tino's waiting arms on the TA, trying to hide in the trees, and Daniel will go down. He was in with there for a while. Sadly, it didn't last for him. He tries to get out with a blink. Nice attempt, didn't work. And I love how Yopash, he just doesn't care. He prevents them from taking the outpost. He knows there's no way they kill him. He has the say on this. Even if Storm jumps him, he has enough time to get out. Kim's down bottom. We'll find Armel. Goes for the Eclipse. Solo kill. Armel pops the BKB and gets away. But boy, oh boy, was that close. <laughs> He's doing this. Ooh. Ah, Tino yeah, what Tims is doing really well throughout the whole game with his Luna is uh, if you noticed every time they gank Storm, he's pitch perfect with Lucent being preventing that uh, ball lightning, right? Every time Storm tries to ball lightning, he Lucent beams him and buys them like an extra second and a half to kill Armel off. Yep. That's what he did on bottom lane as well. He pops his ulti and then he breaks the, the ball lightning with Lucent beam, forcing the BKB instead. Storm won't have a BKB for 30 seconds for this defense, but at the same time, that Aghanim's Eclipse is going to be on cooldown for another 60 seconds, but doesn't seem like Boom care too much. They are ready to start poking and prodding at the Fnatic high ground. Raven with a BKB of his own on the front lines. All eyes kind of on him as far as the big carry goes to defenders when he has got the level 3 coup de grace. They are doing what they can to keep this tower alive, but it's already below half health, and you gotta imagine Tino's gonna be coming in for round two in just a second. Yeah, his Aegis is gone in 40 seconds. If you're Fnatic, oh, they're fighting Oh, before. nice Yules. Breaks the skewer. Jabs, gets health back to base with the cookie here. He's still getting pretty low here. Yopaz is committing. The Dream Call is gonna catch two, including the PA. Jabs ends up going down here with the Brewmaster split, zoning all the Fnatic heroes back into base. This does not look good for them as, boom, just focus the racks. Tino eyes on the prize, gets the objectives while the rest of the Fnatic team just have to stay away thanks to FBZ's Brewmaster Primal Split. Okay, bottom racks pretty much uncontested here. There is at least still RP and the buyback on Magnus. I think it's really important that they didn't use that. Now the buyback's in the BKB. They want to go for these kills here. They're going on Tino. He pops a BKB because he gets caught in the overgrowth. Nice kill on the TA. They're going to get one more with the Brewmaster. Couldn't get the second primal split off. Scam going to go for a TP out. Is there anything to cancel this? No. Yeah, really, this defense, I actually expected them not to force the defense on the bottom lane and instead wait out the ages because ages, it, it needed, what, 30 extra seconds? After that, you can actually fight and win the fight with an RP. Yeah. So. Mid lane was, like, when you're looking at it from distance, maybe it's difficult for Boom to see. But you you know that Magnus has a buyback. He's going to blink in RP and TA is dead. She's just gone in that second, so... Well played by Jabs to, um, to buy back there and make the play. Down bottom DJ, walking in the wrong neighborhood. Glimmer cape. Gets out of the sentry range and it's gonna turn and use that shard to scatter blast, follows up the cookie, but Yopaj has the Aeon just now. The Eclipse on Armel, he's gonna ball away without a BKB. He has to be very careful. They're fighting Raven? five versus three and they're gonna delete Skem. Raven, he's coming, he's here, ready to play. As the chase is on, but Tim's is far enough away that they won't get any follow-up kills. Fnatic, some nice kills, but they're still down 20k gold. It's not easy to play enchantments into PA and then when he gets that break, you're just dead. He jumps you, you don't have untouchable. 
here is just gone. And 20, like you said, 20k ahead, but uh, some nice plays. And if they get the RNG on their side, if they get a couple of nice crits with Empower and uh, and RP, it's PA after all. This is like when you ask players which hero did you get from Page on first. Like I, I think there's a bunch of us that PA would be the answer. Absolutely. Now they've got level 3 Eclipse and a DD room bottled up for Tino's Templar Assassin. So we'll see if Fnatic find a way to move out on the map and make another move. Seems like a lot of eyes and pressure on a Jabs as Magnus. Yeah, another double damage on TA. Like, Tino is really picking them up every single time. It's necessary. And it's, it looks like it will be just before the smoke. Yeah, there's a smoke on both sides. Are they gonna be up here? Are scanning. Attic positioning. They've got Daniel's train protect on the front lines. They scatter the enchantress to start things off. Blinking in his Yopage, but he's not the target you want to go in if you're fanatic. Not with that A on this. Hunting for bigger fish, and it's gonna he's gonna go in. He's got the break with the fan of knives, but it's not enough to really even threaten the enchantress of life. Instead, it's gonna be the puck going in with the dream core. Catches a couple here, the Mortimer's kisses, they're gonna jump the TA, can they burst her? And it looks like the answer's gonna be yes as they bring down TA, a huge kill. They want through as well, can he get the split off? But with the silence, he can't! Scam is next in line as Fnatic are holding strong, putting together some amazing team fights. Really well played by them. I have to say, I'm impressed. Like, they're really making this PA Magnus work. And it, it looks like Boom are the ones this time around that aren't truly really respecting the strength of uh, PA Magnus combination. 3 was there as well with a nice blink into overgrowth, but it all started with just poking that Enchantress, right? Like making them feel that they can make a play because Enchantress... Mid lane, Storm gets jumped on, but the Glimmer came safe! They didn't have detection! Armo would have gone down there. He didn't have a BKB and instead now Puck has to get the hell out of there. Fnatic want Roshan, but they have to be a little bit careful. Yopash. With the storm so low, and Yopash brings down the true protector. Yopash is just playing one versus five with an arcane rune. There's nothing they can do about it. And I don't even think Fnatic can get Roshan anymore. They're backing off as if they just have to give it up. He is out of mana. This man is a beast. He's not an idol, he's a beast. Like, he goes in and single handedly pretty much prevents that Roshan from happening. Yeah. yeah, I was just about to praise Fnatic. I was just about to say that if they do get this Aegis, the game becomes, even though Boom is 14k ahead, it becomes really hard for them. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for Fnatic, they're going to have to either try and defend Roshan or just let it go. They've got 40 seconds before RP is back on Magnus, so perhaps a very small window for Boom if they're quick about Roshan, but it doesn't look like they're going to get there in time so fanatic want to set up to contest roshan definitely possible definitely possible and it's a good area to fight for them because um they will know where, where the ta is and they will be able to initiate on her maybe with your overgrowth maybe with magnus rp i feel that if you're boom it's on fbz to start the start the fights differently i think you need to just pop this primal split and run at them or something to defend the roshan it's really important that you do not let Fnatic initiate on the TA. Yeah, we definitely haven't quite felt the impact of FBZ's Brewmaster this game. Like, it was like, when they pushed the Rax bottom, it was nice, like, zoning heroes away, but it's nothing compared to what we saw out of his Mars right now. Yeah. He's doing some nice plays with the spells. Um, maybe they go by unnoticeable, but he's dispelling every every team fight. Like, he's doing it versus Treant and whatnot, but it, it, I agree completely that it's not nearly as impactful as the Mars in the last game. Okay, boom, they don't want to go Roche. They are uh, hating this mid lane. So it's a nice play for them. It's not something that Fnatic probably expects. Well, Armel does. <laughs> the Opaj is looking for, yeah. <laughs> I think Armel realized, like, they're not at Roshan. They're hunting me because he showed bottom. And his teammates are just all chilling around that top side of the map. So heads up play from Armel just to get out and Radiant play it safe. With a yep. ceremonial robe to give him a bit of extra survivability and some extra mana. And they're actually scanning the pit on the side of Radiant. They, they're just gonna send that illusion in. You can always park a creep from Enchantress as well, if you wanted to. 
Yeah, it's in a really cool place. The creep sees Roshan, but the Puck Illusion doesn't see the creep when you toggle vision. So that must be like some blind spot in Roshan. Where, with where that Alpha Wolf is, the Radiant don't actually see it when they run into the pit. Yeah, Rosh, he has a very interesting uh, house. Like, here is scroll <laughs> through his walls. He has some spots that are, like, you can hide in them. It, it's, it's, it's an interesting den that he's got. Yeah. Bit of a trick house is... Dabs will take out the trap in the Roshan pit, then put his Alpha Wolf back in that little sneaky spot. See, Enchantress is going to come in and... Okay, yeah, yeah, scouts out the Alpha Wolf now. But yeah, you have to actually go in the same spot as the Alpha Wolf in order to find it. That was mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so annoying. Like you say, very, very interesting vision stuff around the Roshan pit and, you know, other, other mechanics as well. And this he time sends another again, one? Yeah, they're this on, time around, they, they take it. Yeah. <laughs> they found the spot. They know where he's hiding the creeps now. But here they go. They're going to drop the kisses, but they're not actually in the Roshan pit. Yopai's just going to blink high ground. Count everything out and then orb his way out of there as FBZ goes running in looking for the primal but they're gonna RP him though! Solo RP takes out the Brewmaster. Is it worth it for Fnatic? Now they don't have their big ultimate for this team fight, but yeah, they feel like they just gotta TP and bitch this fight. Raven? Raven in trouble. Yeah, he goes down. Does have a buyback, but I don't know if he wants to use it for this one. That was a maybe a bit of an overcommitment from T Fnatic to commit an RP. Yeah, Tino instantly in the pit. And uh like I said that FBZ he needs to be the one to make the impact. Uh DJ? He's trying to get behind enemy lines, maybe go for a Roshan steal, but he's got uh, unfortunate. By TA yeah, yeah, unfortunate for him to be exactly on the TA trap. I, I said that BZ needs to start these fights off by using his ulti and running in, but no, he doesn't even use his ulti, he just sacrifices himself. And uh, if the RP is used for anyone else but Tino, they lose that fight. So that's, that's his job done, I guess. Like. If you bait yeah. out the RP, it's fine. Yeah, for Jabs, I mean, he saw an opening to basically make it so that Brewmaster couldn't get a single Primal Split off, but it comes at such a heavy cost when you can't control the TA. Exactly. Like, that, that's something... It's, it's a hard decision to make because that Panda is in your face. If you don't RP him, he will ulti and perhaps even Cyclone you, and then you can't RP anyway, so... Uh... It's a tough decision a decision to make. They're pushing high ground top. Backdoor protection will kick in soon as Armel just cleared out the creeps mid. And he's going to clear out another wave. So they can't really keep pushing until they get a creep wave with them as top lane is being pushed out as well. So it looks like Boom will be forced to fall back for a little bit. Shard now on Puck, so he has that Aghanims built in, he has yep. the Shard, Dagon, Timeless Relic, like Hyopaj is just a... I think he dishes out more damage than the TA in these fights, really. He's hit level 25 as well, so he gets that extra range and AoE on Waning Rift. As Boom, just looking to control some of these lanes, make sure that Fnatic aren't able to easily keep pushing them out. Armel Storm has definitely been a bit pesky for them to deal with. Very impressed by how Armel's played from behind this game, but right now looking like it may not be enough unless Fnatic can come up with a sick high ground defense. Yopaj knows he's hunting him, but uh, Armel, there we go. Oh, he, they, he's got Dreamfall. But there is the follow up going to be there. They get off the electric vortex. He's waiting for that leash to end. The Aghanim Scepter Just preventing him from ball lightning out. And yet Armel, is he out of this one though? He needs to TP, he gets into the trees. They're pinging at Yopaj, doesn't find him. Ooh, he had the take on, he went for the Yules as well. The Dagon self there would have killed him. <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah, the, for sure. The, the self fuels right there, that one millisecond away from actually catching Storm. It's been such a fun battle to watch Armel versus Yopaj this game. I mean, it's, it's constantly Yopaj hunting him, but Armel has somehow managed to avoid... Like, any other Storm, I feel like, would have died 9 out of 10 of those games. Look, I, I would be 0-20 at this point. <laughs> Jabs, skewer back in after the RP. They go in on Kino. He's got the Aegis, but they pull him in pretty deep here. He's got the size of Icy, but Raven's already committed his BKB. He doesn't have the second one without any kind of refresh here. Can they follow this one up? Tino going to run back to the objectives here. Still has a BKB of his own. He held it for the respawn, so boom. Have a decision to make. There's no RP if they want to go for this Rax here. But... There is. Remember, there's refresher on uh, Magnus. Okay. Second RP could be coming soon. Magnus is going to have to 
get get to find a way in. He's been cycloned up. Great play from FBZ just to take the Magnus out of the fight. All in from Armel. Not going to find the initiation he was hoping for. And Fnatic lose a second lane of Rax. Yeah, really good heads up play by FBZ to cyclone him uh, while they take the Raxes. And yeah, Jabs almost fooled me as well with uh, with that sneaky little refresher that he bought. He doesn't have buyback, right? You don't. It's not really something that you expect. Um, like, yeah. You, you, you kind of want to buy back on your cores, but he spends all to get that orb. Yeah, if he wants, I mean, if he wants to be using that RP like just on a brewmaster as we saw seen before, or on a TA Aegis, you need that second RP. It's pretty much all of their team fight at this point in the game. And it's getting increasingly difficult to kill off heroes in one big spell, right? Because FBZ he has Aeon Disc, he has Lotus Orb now too. It's difficult to just use one spell and pop someone. There is a Holy Locket always in Enchantress to bring them up a little bit. Puck has A on disc as well. Alright, well, Fnatic managed to get themselves out on the map, trying to collect some of these missing items of theirs. Does anyone use Witch, Witchbane, by the way? Like, is there a hero that likes carrying that item? I've seen it every now and then when, like, you feel like, like when the purge feels useful. Uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know rare, how much but... damage the passive actually does. You're playing versus us. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the hand for sure. You're playing versus a puck, he has like 2.2k mana. So that's what, like, 100 damage, 4%, is it? Something like that. Uh, yes, yep, about a hundred, yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if you Next. hit him with it, right? Yeah, so on a hero that, like, is hitting quickly and getting a lot of attacks on, like, a Medusa-type hero, it potentially could be useful. I, I just Let's see if it doesn't work it. with, like, this, it doesn't work with, I imagine it works with Medusa's split shot, too. Yeah. Maybe with, like, the level 25, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Yeah, well, they gave it to three. Uh, he's not really going to be hitting yeah. anyone, but, uh... <laughs> That this spell is nice, I guess, so there's that. Boom, looking for a jump down bottom. What can they find? The killing blow could be very near if Fnatic aren't careful. Play the Shiva's guard, so he's going a little bit tankier. Trying to hit that level 25, but he's just not quite there for this current fight if it breaks out. Moves himself bottom, but immediately zipping away. Having an idea of where Boom are and not looking to get too close. Yeah, he's just very cautious. He does yeah. kill off creep waves, but he instantly gets out like you called it. Because they also took the dire jungle, so they know that boom, they're not there. They're not in the dire jungle. There's only literally one place that they can be if they're not there, and that's the triangle. Patch goes in, gets the dream call out on Raven with the eclipse from the Luna. Forces out a BKB, and there's a second one though. The Luna has got a refresher here. Raven does not have a refresher himself, so no second BKB. He's going to be thrown up in the air, and they're just going to focus the buildings. Objective gaming as they zip in. They throw out an RP. It's going to catch the TA. No, it just catches the primals, but the TA is out. Gets back to safety, and now the E-Blade Dagon coming into DJ Snapfire. He's getting very low. Stays alive for now. Fnatic just being zoned away while Tino gets to work on the base. It's got to go in, and they will do so. Skem gets taken out, but the Hex comes in with the Eclipse. And once again, the Luna doing too much damage. Kim's as refresher. Deletes the PA, will force a buyback. They're still focusing the racks here. They're so close to getting the Mega Creep. Kino wants his Rain Rex. They're going to get the Megas. Is this going to be GG? They still want to hold. Fnatic will fight their way through this one if they can. Tino is getting pressured here, but he pops the BKB. Turns with the Hex. He goes on RML Storm, and Storm will go down to the Dagon fight. Has a buyback. As Fnatic... This could be the end for them. Boom, it's taken them 46 minutes, but they've got the Mega Creeps and they want more. So I'm going to buy back as Puck gets very low on mana. The Jabs, looking for that RP, doesn't need to commit it for now. Looks like he's going to be able to bring down Tino's TA without having to commit the RP. And that's good news for Fnatic, but the bad news is they've lost their base. They've lost their base. They used three buybacks and they're not in a good spot. But you, I don't think you GG here. There is no goddamn way you GG. You have a, you have a PA. You continue yeah. playing. You instantly like he had agonims queued up before. The moment he buybacks, instantly switches into rapier mode, right? Like yeah. that. That's what you have to do. No, still, I still absolutely. I, the first thing after you started talking, I clicked the PA, thinking, okay, is he going rapier? <laughs> yeah. Of course. It's that one 
One little glimmer of hope. DJ bottom. In some trouble. As Armel tries to make a counterplay in this one, but they've got the Yule Scepter. This is on now. Can they get out? It looks like there's no real way to punish this one, and Januel has to be a little bit careful himself. Your pleasure's puck is just like you, you called him a beast, and that's exactly what it's been this game. If you remember when PA was dying to uh, the ultimate of Luna, it was Yopaj with Waning Rift's shard. He knocked her back into Luna's ulti. He actually uh, bought enough time for her to die there immediately in the hex. So, just, uh, yeah, they're just playing so well on the side of Boom. When it comes to execution of team fights, when it comes to the way they move across the map, and it really feels that, ne uh, that Scam brought the magic from OB Neon's last season into boom like yeah the, all these players are extremely extremely talented but that's also coupled yep. with some really good strategic movements on the map oh oh that's the thing you look at fanatic and you, you'd say the same thing a ton of really strong individually talented players but it's that kind of it's the strategy and the ideas that it feels like scam has brought to the table and that boomer showcasing game and game after game that seems to be winning them winning them dota games the way Skem played the early game, denying all the ancient farm while TA free farmed away. Like this game from the get go was has been boon favorite. Yeah, just these small little things, right? He feels uh, when, when I look at Boom, I, it's it feels like you're learning something new while you're watching them, right? Like it feels like, all right, so you're doing that small little thing there, all right, and here you did that. And very yeah. nice. Like all these small little pieces of puzzle that come together. Meanwhile, on Fnatic, they're, they're amazing players, as talented as, as on Boom. It just doesn't feel as inspiring, at least not in this series so far. Yeah. It, it feels like they're still in that adjustment phase, you know, new roster, players learning and adjusting to new roles as well. Jab's playing three position now, having to really be the guy that starts off these fi fights. DJ back to four position when he was playing five, pos five position for a while. So a lot of players kind of, you know, having to readjust and re, re acclimate. Yeah, definitely that's adjusting period, right? Like acclimating period that's necessary for them. Well, Boom gonna get themselves Roche number three, Refresher Shad, Aegis, Cheese, Aganims. it's got it all. <laughs> yeah. TA running around with two, two Aghanim Scepters in the backpack. Probably oh, was it, oh that was sold. the fourth Roche. Oh, they got, yeah, they got the Aghanims and the Refresher Shad. Yeah. So, all right. That's one Aghanim sold, and he's sitting on 6k in gold now. Yep. Happy TA with a swift link queued up as the, the final item, it seems. Not even u utilizing any kind of boots right now, just the spider legs as the neutral item. Hey, there's no there's no rape here. We've been tricked. He went for nullifier. Oh, never mind. Go next. GG. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if he would consider a refresher on PA himself, because a lot of these fights it feels like he really needs like a second BKB or something. Yeah, but... I, I guess maybe an Aghanims then. It doesn't obviously get you a second BKB, but if you do get a kill... Jabs goes in, RP on an Enchantress. That's not the target I think he was hoping for. Skewer back, just going to catch the Storm Spirit. They are losing their PA, and Storm gets deleted by an Eclipse. That's just game over. Not the Amplify. most climactic ending, but Fnatic <laughs> tried to hold. Yeah, Ample, if you noticed, after the RP, yeah, I think they were mad. After the RP on Enchantress, PA just blinks in there and stands on the grave of Enchantress and gets oh. just ultied to death. He, he wasn't moving. He didn't pop BKB anything. Maybe he was stunned, but he wasn't moving. He just accepted the fate. Well, Boom Esports get themselves a 2-0 win over one of their perhaps big rivals here in Division 1, Fnatic. A lot of people, you know, expecting this team to be a top three team alongside Boom as well as T1. But so far, Fnatic still have some things to work out. And it's Boom who convincingly win this another series here. They were meant to be a Division 2 team until a slot opened up. So they are so far looking like they truly belong in Division 1. Their movements and the way they play the lanes, fine. The skill on their players, sure, fine, all great, but their movements are just inspiring. For me, that's really what matters. It's how you approach the game, what objectives you're taking, what kills you're ignoring to take objectives. Later on, which smokes, uh, the rotations across the map, it's just uh, some next level stuff. They're, no, I, I wouldn't say they're reinventing Dota, but they are playing it in a different way, and 
that's always nice to see. Yep. Well, some great games of Dota from Boom Esports, but that's not all the Dota we have today. We've got Motivate Trust coming up a bit later against SMG. Uh, but before we get there, we're going to head back to our panel and take a quick break, and then we'll be ready for our final series of today. We'll see you there.